How's it? Welcome back to the channel. So as I've been hopping from topic to topic here as of late, I thought I would keep that string going and actually talk about one of the cornerstones of my channel, something called liminal dreaming, which are these like stage one of sleep dreams that we pass through every time we're falling asleep. It's something that I like to call and just was calling in the very beginning before I found like that liminal dreaming book I covered a year or so ago. What I was always calling hypnagogic meditation, where every time we're falling asleep, we get these thoughts and images or these dreams that come up, which are called hypnagogic images or hypnagogic imagery, sometimes also called hypnagogic imagery or hypnagogic images or hypnagogia or hypnagogia. Now I call it hypnagogia and hypnagogic because if you, depends if you want to follow that English rule where like, you know, if you have a G that's followed by a vowel sound, in this case an I, you give it the soft, the soft just sound. So that's how I read it first. And so that's how I started saying it first. So I'm sticking to it. I'm not sure actually what the correct pronunciation of it is. I assume it's how I say it, but maybe not. Anyway, as I get totally sidetracked, um, one of the things I cover on my channel specifically about this that I haven't actually seen covered anywhere else. Now it might be covered in other places, but it's definitely not commonly covered. Is how to get into the state, not just lucidly aware, but also how to kind of influence it and control it pretty much in the same way you would influence and control lucid dreams. So I'll, top, um, I'll talk a little bit about that and a little bit about seeing these images, building them up without losing conscious awareness and then introducing some level of control. So one of the problems people can run into is that when they're first lying down and trying to see these hypnagogic images come up, say if one does happen to flash up, they'll see that image and then they'll want to try and like hold it and make it clearer and hold on to that image, which very often can cause you to lose the image and then kind of just wake yourself up out too much of it and kind of just everything goes black. Not too much unlike what happens in some lucid dreams where, you know, people will say like if you stare at an object in a lucid dream, it can cause a dream to break down and you to wake up, which I've actually said the complete opposite to that in past videos. But what I realized is I'm not doing just a kind of blank stare at something. I was, it's something that I refer to as like my active staring technique. Don't want to get too sidetracked. If you want to look it up, go dig through my backlog of videos and you can find it. But um, so when you see this image come up, don't worry about trying to focus on it too much and make it clearer. What you want to do instead is just make a little mental note of what it is coming up. Like, you know, whatever it happens to be an image of a person's face, an outline of something, but make a little mental note of it. Right. And then, uh, and actually not too much unlike what you would be doing in a classic meditation where say if you're doing like open awareness meditation, you're trying to keep a blank mind, a thought comes up, you make a mental note of it, you let it go. And then you wait to see what comes up next. So basically that same approach, but instead of letting the thought go, like try to try to track it and follow it. That's why I like to say you want to kind of not so much make a mental note as it is like narrate in your head what's going on by narrating. It can help keep you one step removed from the imagery and the thoughts to prevent you from losing conscious awareness, getting totally sucked up into it and losing, you know, and then falling asleep regular style, how, how, how you typically would on, on most occasions, right? So you stay one step removed by giving this little soft narration in your head to what's happening. That also has the added benefit to keeping you locked into the, the story of whatever's coming up, whatever narratives packed with that imagery. And then the imagery can start to progress. So you can have some hypnagogic images, which are like stills, but eventually they will always increase to more of like a, like a movie type scenario where you're seeing this thing play out with some kind of story packed along with it, just like a regular typical dream would. Now, unlike typical dreams, you're not in it in the first person, like, like we are in waking life. It's kind of more like you're almost seeing it and watching it or observing it's from the outside. Um, so that can work really well. And then to introduce some level of control to it, as you're packing along the, this falling along the, the narration, start to leave kind of breadcrumbs to lead it to where you want it to lead. Now it's, you can completely just change things altogether and bring up a completely different scenario. But typically what you'd want to do is you'd want to leave little breadcrumbs or trails of thoughts for these images to follow and track in the particular direction that you want to try and take this, um, you know, this hypnagogic meditation or this liminal dream, you know, take it in directions that you want it to go. And um, yeah, give it a try. 